Earlier this year, GitHub announced GitHub Copilot, a service added to Visual Studio Code that brings AI autocompletion to code. Here you can see it take the current context of the code base and generate multiple suggestions based on what the user is typing. In this video, I'll show you how I created my own version of GitHub Copilot. Before we make our own, let's try to understand how GitHub Copilot works first. Let's assume Copilot is using a basic client-server model, where VS Code is our client and GitHub Copilot is our server. VS Code takes our code and sends it to the GitHub server, which then spits out multiple suggestions. However, GitHub servers are probably super complex and dispatch requests to multiple workers that each probably have their own tensor processing units, which then gather all their results and then feed them straight back to their user. These workers use a model called GPT-3 to help generate the text. GPT-3 is a machine learning model created by OpenAI that basically scraped the entire internet and got super good at autocomplete. GPT-3 is amazing and is capable of writing websites, chatbots, and so much more. There's an open source version of GPT-3 called GPT-J that is extremely similar and super capable. Here's a fun website you can go to play with the model and see how the model thinks. As you can see, entering code directly into this model, we actually get a result that looks a lot like GitHub Copilot. We can leverage the fact that GPT-J is powerful on its own and design our system around it. Here's how we're gonna design our own GitHub Copilot. Our service will be listening for requests and when one comes in, we'll send back a key letting our client know we started a worker. Our client can check the status of the result with a given API what our server will be doing is managing a queue of jobs that will be pushed onto the worker whenever it's free. The worker will run the GPTJ model and output the result. This result will then be cached for the next time the client tries to query for it. On the client side, after we submit the job, we will have to keep polling to see when our job is done, and once it is done, we can push it onto our suggestion list that is displayed to the user. As far as rendering the suggestions, I found this neat package that implements autocomplete for a given list of strings. Now we just need a way to trigger a request to our server. We can register a trigger in our package JSON config file and then access that callback using our command palette. Inside our callback, I grab the current context, which is just the previous 512 words, and then I send it to our model. I then create a promise that waits until the result is ready, and then it appends it to our suggestion list. At this point, everything is implemented, and now we can go into our IDE and use Copilot. We type code into our editor, go to our command palette to generate our suggestions, and then wait until it's done, and then we have autocomplete. To get more suggestions, just keep running it again. When we have multiple suggestions, we can cycle through them like this. There are a few important notes about this implementation. This implementation uses the slim weights of the GPTJ model, which is less effective than the full weights. The slim weights require a GPU with at least 20 gigs of VRAM. In this case, I'm using a 3090. If you don't have access to a GPU that can store the model, you can play with the model online for free using Google's Colab Notebook. Another option is to rent TPUs from Google's cloud. However, I found this difficult and expensive. There is also a nice Python package written by Michael Arana that allows you to access the GPTJ model online for free. One thing to be careful of is any model you use online might have some privacy and security issues around it. For my last note, I want to share another really cool thing you can do in GPTJ, which is add training data onto your model. This theoretically means if you have a large project, you can fine tune your completions for that specific project. That about wraps up the video. You can find the source code for everything you saw here in the description. And if you like this video and want to see more fun projects like this one, please consider subscribing.